Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Aspiration Inspiration with me, Jason George. We as always we try to aspire to inspire before we expire. And today we have an amazing guest with us. We have Tamsin Thomas from East Region Mitchell's playing with us this morning. Tamsin, thank you so much for joining us. No, it's only a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, so 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 Tamsin, you know, let's get straight into it. For for those of us who may not know, Tamsin is one of uh, you know, it's our very own, I, I, I could say, our very own Elaine Thompson in South Africa. You know, she's a champion sprinter and she made headlines recently, um, even last year when she won the South African champs and also made some headlines in winning African championships and, you know, placing, placing in podium positions. And, you know, you are, um, you know, a well-respected and, and, and renowned sprinter in the country, Tams. And how does that feel? You know, how does it feel to be on that level in the guys, has it always been something that you work towards or like what does that mean for you um to say i don't think it's something that i work towards i think it's just something that crossed my thoughts you know um i'm from it just plain east ridge um i attended imperial primary and i think that's where it all started you know you have your teachers it's in the schools you want to win <laughs> you know imperial primary is the best school for sports or athletics in, in plain Imperial. Yes, Imperial Primary. Have you heard of? And we also have to go Sea against Beacon Hill. Have you heard of? No. Come. No. Come. No. On. We I always, but we always won our our zone, our section. Okay. That, that so we were, um, yeah, and I, you know, I have a twin sister, and we were known for the, the sprinters or the fast girls, you can say. Oh, she okay. also used to do athletics at that time, and um. Yeah, my last year in grade seven, I made my first like Western Province team oh. on primary school, and uh, like your mommy has to um, in the early year, put school in Kales River, and I think that's where my mother oh. also went to go in the rollers, and I got my first coach, and you know it's 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 a journey that happens, but you don't expect it to happen, and yeah. if I could look uh, maybe ten years back to say. Um, if I thought I was going to be a, 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 a senior sprinter, let me say so, I would have said no. <laughs> I don't think that. Just imagine you. Um, we don't look at us using your arms and leg, and that is just a career. We think no. <laughs> we want to. I don't know. Work in a big corporate company, and yes, maybe that's yes. a career. But like just to move your hands and arms. Yeah, yeah. that's a yeah, career and yeah. something so simple. Mm, mm. and I think that's I always say I didn't know I'm going to be a professional athlete but mm. as I grew and I matured I realized actually this is actually my career and this is actually my yeah. God-given talent that I have to share with others with yeah with others across the world in South Africa and even in my hometown which yeah. was playing I, I love I love that and I love the fact that you say you know we have the conventional thing of you know, you need to have an office job. You need to, you need to go and study something yeah. to be something. And, um, you know, we don't, look, we, we don't look at, you know, actually some of these sports, are, oh, and I mean, you're studying, you're a student as well. Um, you have that yeah. formal education. Yeah. Um, so talk to us about that. You know, how do you, what are you studying? And, you know, why, why do you, why are you still a student if you're saying, you know, your career is yeah. nothing? I know, I think you say, uh, I am I make it sound easy that I'm just using my arms yeah, and yeah. legs, but it's actually hard work. It doesn't come easy. You feel the lactic, you feel the tiredness, your muscle aches, your pains, your injuries mm. also. And yeah, I basically, through my athletics, um, I got a sponsor, not a sponsorship, but a bursary um, to come study at the University of Johannesburg. And I think it's very also, it's very important as an athlete also not to just focus on one um, mm like just to focus on sport, but also bringing the education side because tomorrow you can get an injury that can come from nowhere mm -hmm. and it can maybe uh, be a lifetime injury. And you can sit out for years because of that injury and not yeah. fall back on. So that's where my education is. So I'm currently in my third year studying sport management and yeah, we are in lockdown studying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's great. And I mean, and as you say, um, and it's, I think it's the first time I also, you know, now understand why a lot of sports stars actually pursue studies on the side because, and I know a lot yeah. of people then become, you know, coaches at different clubs and they start 
run businesses and, 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 and maybe, you know, help out at academies and things. And that makes sense. Because and also, yeah, I think because of our sport, we get an opportunity to actually study for free. Yeah. Or even study where they give you a certain percent and your parents only have to cover maybe 20% of your studies. It's also an opportunity. Um, so yeah. like my mother always say, my parents always say, grab the opportunities with both both hands and never say no for opportunities. Yeah. So sometimes I like to say no, thank you, no, thank you. And my <laughs> mom say, Hamza, you can't always say no. It's yeah. people... People want to help you, so always, mm. you know, take the help and say yes. And even though you're shy and you know you, you don't want always to take those things, but yeah. like take it and you never know what it can bring to you one day. Exactly, exactly. I think I was about I was about 16, 17 when I did VAC work for the first, not VAC work, but like job shadowing for the first time at, the, at, at a big firm. Yeah. Um, and the, the first piece of advice that the person gave me was to make use of every opportunity in, this, in, in the industry, you know, and in anything in life, to make use of every single opportunity that you can have to develop yourself as a person, you know, so that you can. Yeah. Um, and I think that's very important. But, but to- and the thing is, is also when we, when we take opportunities, we learn a new skill and, exactly. you know, Sometimes you can learn a skill and feel like, no, but this is actually my passion. This is what I actually yeah. like more than what I'm currently doing yeah. now. Um, and um, also, it, it it can bring you to the actually to the to you where God actually wants to place you yes. in life. So yes. you never know. Agree, hundred percent. Agree, hundred percent. And 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 a lot of the times we we want to know where it's gonna lead. You know, we want to have that yeah. certainty of I want to know where, yeah, but. We, we sometimes we don't take the opportunities that will push us in mm. the direction. And, and I think, you know, it goes to that quote of, you know, our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but is that we are, are powerful, you know, beyond what we get. So uh, it's that thing of you are more afraid of if you're going to get into this thing that is actually going to be working out and you're going to be, you know, yeah. up a level every single time as opposed yeah. to taking the opportunity and be like, ah, yeah. And, also, and once we're in that space of where we want to be, we actually it actually motivates you to put, to just work hard yeah. because you're not going to enjoy something you like, like you like doing. Or yeah, yeah. It does, I, if you're doing something that you're not enjoying, it's not going to mm. feel like, oh, I have to wake up again and go train now. <laughs> but like for me, I always think of times when you have to get up, you're not going to get fit by laying here. You have to go work hard. There's people that is counting on you. Yeah. There's people that is watching you. Um, it's not easy sometimes to just yeah. get up and go do something. No, mm-hmm. I lay until the last minute. <laughs> and then I get up. I'm normal. I sleep. I love laying. I love not even just, I just like laying. Yeah. Um, and it's the opposite of, of, of running and laying. <laughs> but I like laying um, when yeah, I'm not but, doing when But I you work it out. You go and work it off again later, you know? That all that Yeah, no. <laughs> and if I come back from training, I come lay again. <laughs> yeah. so that's that's me. It's well deserved. It's well deserved, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even people people think I'm working hard. Yes, I'm working hard when I'm training, but when I'm when I have freedom, I like to lay, watch TVs, watch my selfies and all these things. Yeah. And, and I think I think we must that. You know, you you need to you need to cut you need to be normal, you know, at some at some point. Yeah. Have that yeah, no that human element to it all. It's just like, you get tired. You, 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 you mm. get fed up of certain things and um, you just need that breakaway. Um, and I think that's, that's important. But apart from just going to that point that you're talking about the training, you know, and people are watching you, you must know that your competitors are also training, you know? So it's... Yeah, a, a true. Step up. Um, I mean, I, I do karate. And... Um, when I'm not training, I think about the guy that I'm going to meet in the tournament that's currently training hard and I need to get up and go and train. So that if I get, yeah. that, you know, we at least at a, you know, at, a, at, a, at, a, at an equivalent, you know, wavelength. Um, but yeah. but as, as you say, you, you sometimes need that break. And I think I've been having a very long break recently, but we're not going to get into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, like um, you mentioned that you do this at training. Um, I know I used to in, in, in um, you know, they were the Stormer Stadium years. <laughs> I can't not get to the place. Newlands. Um, Newlands, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, the place is there. I used to train there. And I know that if you know Shocky Boy, his name is Shocky Boy, but his name is Ahmad. He's from Strandfontein. Uh-huh. Um, he also, he's also a Paralympian swimmer. And we used to, I used to train there with my trainer, and he also used to train there. And if I were maybe doing push ups, and my trainer says 20, 
would always say, no, do 21. You completely saw doing 20. You have to do one extra. Yeah, so, yeah. stuff yeah, like that. You always, and I think that stuck to me. And I always think of doing one more than my competitors. Yeah. Just and, for the advantage. <laughs> and, and I mean, you're, you are 100 meter and 200 meter sprinter. Um, and there's this, there's this saying, or there was this rumor that, you know, guys like you say in Bolt, when they're running or when they're training, they run an extra few meters so that they don't get, you know, overwhelmed when it comes to running the 100 meter race. So if they're training for 100 meter, they run 150. If they train 200 meters, yeah. 150. Do you practice that? Is it something that you guys practice? Yeah, so we go more than, so I'm a 100 and 200 meter sprinter, so my arm will probably be a bit longer than a 200, so for instance, maybe a 300. Yeah. So we train different, at different times of the season, we train different muscle groups or different, okay. like you say, you get an in-season, out um, off-season, so in our off-season, we'll go a bit longer, we'll put in the, like the endurance work mm-hmm. with the speed, so that we're not forgetting um, that we're not training only the 100 meter because you're running yeah. 100. We have to be fitted to actually run that 100. So yeah. it will be maybe um, twice in the gym, like Thursdays and um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll be in the gym also working on strength, um, mm. squatting, more heavier, um, not doing more, more explosive stuff off season. But when it comes to in season, we'll do but more box jumps, um, yeah. quicker push press more quicker things because we want to be more explosive and off season we just want to gain more strength yeah um i'm a bit i don't gain muscle quickly but <laughs> but i the power is still there do you understand yeah. so yeah, no, definitely. yeah my organs will maybe like send us a gym program they will do mon like i say tuesdays and thursdays and then mondays and um wednesdays and fridays and saturdays we on the track either doing um Ooh. endurance work that and then we can do sets like, yeah, we can do sets like heels. Um, it will vary from two to three sets, maybe um, four runs in between. It really depends on the session. And then also we'll do, um, yeah, like speed sure. work, power work, um, you know, sledding, running with sled, or you can run with a tire. I know some people yeah. run with a tire. So it's, yeah, it's, like, I'm tired uh, just listening to you. Like, <laughs> like that is, that is. Well, you know, I also, when my coach said, my coach said, normally sends the program on a Sunday, then mm-hmm. I already feel tired, but our body is actually <laughs> stronger than what we think. Yeah. Um, sometimes I feel a, sh- a session, and then after the session, I feel like I don't know if feel tired or mm-hmm. then I thought I was going to be. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes we actually afraid to do certain things, but when we actually do it, it seems easy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean definitely. Um, and and you say you say that you 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 twin so you have a twin sister. That's that's so cool, by the yeah. way. And um, that she's also into sports. Like, so is your family like into sports or like how does that work? Um, when it comes to my mommy and my daddy's family, I think my sisters. Yeah, my twin sister and I are the only one that does sports. So my sister. Her name is Tamlin Thomas. She used to play, she plays volleyball. Yeah. And she also represented South Africa at the different various volleyball competition. Um, she went to America like two years back for au pair. So I'm trying something different. So she came back last year. So she's going back into the volleyball for now. But like she started with doing athletics and then also grew a different passion for volleyball. Ah, oh, that's that's quite nice, and I mean, like it's it's great that the family is also into sports, and it makes it motivates you, you know, and it, it makes yeah. at least not alone. Yeah, no, my my father, um, my father's the only guy in the house, so <laughs> we all girls. So it's like three girl, um, like my youngest sister and then my mother. So he's the only guy, and he always says like, if, if he can shout for the spring box for his um, daughters also so it doesn't make a difference and he loves people you will leave anything to take someone that is going to play a soccer tournament that is standing on the road now with the soccer boots in the hand you will you will stop and you will go take that person to the soccer field that's that is so amazing that is so that is so yeah and i mean that's what we need that is what we so desperately need in our communities you know and and this there's such a degenerated form of trust now because you know you don't trust loading people into your car because you don't know what they are capable of or what they'll do and it's great yeah. people like that in our communities that still sees 
the young child standing on the street corner as someone who has potential, you know, as someone that can achieve something great. Um, I think that's amazing. Yeah. And I don't think we see that anymore where there's people yeah. standing on the road looking for the transport to come fish them because they're going to play a soccer match. <laughs> I think the more the white indoors or their parents will <laughs> rather take them to where they have to be. Yeah, yeah. And Tamsin, your, your, your training regime that you're talking about, you know, like, and, and before you became like a, a professional sprinter, um, did you always have resources to, 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 to do your, 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 your workouts, you know? And I mean, you're competing against people that come from private schools, you're competing against people that, you know, that have all of the resources in the world, you know, have you always had the resources and how did you bridge that gap between, you know, what you have and what the other people that, that you might race do have access to? Yeah, I think when you're on a, a primary school level, I don't think we have a resources. I remember that in Piro Primary, there was such a ground where we used to run mm. on, and then it's like um, a big field. And I know we had hurdles, but I wasn't a hurdle athlete. Um, I remember on primary school, when I got to my first Western Cape, like say, like Western Province Champs, you had to run with blocks, and I didn't know what uh. is blocks. And not only blocks, but like you'll see someone next to you has spikes on, like, and I'm like, what yeah, are those shoes? Yeah. And I don't even say, you know, I used to run bare feet. Mm. <laughs> that is like, I never knew about spikes, I never knew about blocks. So yeah. that, that was all new to me. I don't think we, are, I had the facilities, like a track close by in which is playing, no, but there is mm. fields and also Blue Down Stadium. So I won't say we, ha I had the facilities but that never actually stopped me from yeah. achieving things that I have um, that I have achieved now especially like I know when my mother bought my first pair of spikes it was only mm. in high school like yeah. for me I didn't feel like I need to have spikes to actually continue doing sports yeah and I came at the late stage and actually it all happened when I went to the sports school um, there's a track there yeah. um, also I don't think it's um, a sports sports school now that it used to be when I was on the sports mm. school but we had I had blocks I had the coach that I got you know and mm. I think if we develop more schools like that in which yeah. is playing that I, maybe not have all the facilities but has has the basics um, mm. it will actually be a good investment for us as the youth in Mitchell's plane and I think Mitchell's plane has so many talent yeah. um, you just have to get noticed and you don't have to have the great facilities, but you can make use of what you have. Yeah, no, definitely. I love, I love that. And I, and I can see that our schools are really trying, you know, and with, yeah. with that are being established now in our schooling in, in Mitchell's Plain and, you know, in, and around the West yeah. Cape, you know, I like, think like the Progressive Principles Association, you know, all of those are like yeah. coming together, seeing how we can take our schools forward. And many schools are now building or, you know, laying foundations for sports fields and for tracks and mm -hmm. swimming pools and I love those chats and where they're going with that. Um, and also not just rugby fields but also <laughs> you yeah. know tracks and yeah, no. and something yeah. like that. Yeah definitely and and I, I think it's a great investment into our communities. Um, I mean I, I, I always I always marvel because I, I used to do uh, believe it or not I used to do athletics on primary school um, but I never yeah. the first team. So I never, I was always the reserve. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think, I think everyone did athletics when they were in prime school. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. You, know, you did athletics just to be out of class and not do homework or work. That, yeah. That's yeah. how it is. We <laughs> ran away from doing schoolwork because we were just want to be on that field for two hours so that we're not busy writing or in class. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, to be there on sports day, because sometimes, you know, everyone couldn't go with to sports day. The school to find of them the race play, you know, and your friends or all of your friends are, you know. yeah, exactly. So, 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 so that was great. Um, but it's amazing how people achieve in, in, in athletics and people from our communities are, are, are rising, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's a fantastic achievement. And I mean, I look forward to seeing you on the Olympic stage one day. And I mean, talk to us about that. Are there any, any, you know, how does that work? I, I, I don't know. I, I think I read in an interview or, or listened in an interview with you that you were preparing for this year's Olympics. And, you know, how does a call up to the Olympics work? How does that, or have you been called up to the, to the Olympic team? How does that work? 
So for any team that we make as athletes, there's always standards. So for instance, like in a hundred meter, we like have to run like a certain time, like 11, two or so forth. Um, then there's those type of standards. So with any team that I make, there's always a type of time that I have to run to actually be selected for uh -huh. the team. So when it comes to Olympics and my goals, it's really to make, to actually represent South Africa at one day, um, either next year Olympics, if it's happening, it is scheduled for next year. Mm -hmm. And also 2024, I think I'll really be at my peak stage where in terms yeah. of um, being older, yeah. um, four, years, um, four years from now, actually working towards 2024 Olympics. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, and then there's, a, there's, there's something I, I, I want you to maybe touch on and I'll, I'll share my screen with you quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. It's this moment, you know. I, I read an article that this was, this was where, this was like full circle moment for you in that you you <laughs> you won or you 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 ran here when you were 15 years old, and then you won the championships. Um, no, no, I think this was this last one. year. Is this the yes. is this the last year one? Um, yes. This this feeling, you know, how does how does this feel? And, and we, we're in Corona now, social distancing, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this was actually last year. Uh. Um, hey, T. <laughs> Check the gap. Social distancing and it's fine. <laughs> oh, my God. Social distancing. No, when it comes to that race, it was in the evening and it was actually last year, like April side, so it was a bit yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah. And I thought so much after that race. But yeah, that was last year at the senior championships um, in Germiston. Yeah. And also for that um, race, um, I wrote an Instagram post to say that, um, you know, my first big race was actually on that track. Yes. Um, my first. Um, how can I call it? My first essays. Like yes. you know, you have your national championships. Yeah. As a sub youth, that was my first. Um, that is where I, I ran like I don't know how many like five years ago where I ran my first big race and mm -hmm. that's where actually people started noticing me. Like I ran mm -hmm. my I ran times that seniors would have run. Um so I think that's where on that track it actually yeah. where it all started for me. And I said in my in my post actually after five years on the same track I won my first senior championship. Mm -hmm. So from a sub youth athlete to a senior now is where I won my first senior championship. Yeah. So yeah, just I That's think when you run good at a track, it becomes mm -hmm. your favorite track track to run at. <laughs> and that's your one. So that's one of my tracks that I like running at. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. It's such a it's such an incredible full circle moment, you know, just to from junior into a senior and then winning at the same track. Um, and then I wanted to ask how, you know, with all of your, with all of your, your involvements and stuff, you know, you are, I mean, you're, you're an athlete. So you, 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 you spoke about your training regime, you know, every day that you have a little bit of training to do, um, you are still, yeah. you, you need to make time for your family, your significant other, and you are running, you, uh, um, I, I think I follow one of your pages, all things curly. Um, you know, you're running that as well. How do you make yeah. do you balance all of that? Um, when it comes to my family, like I always say, we are very close family. Like, mm. um, we will watch a call like every day. When I when I met my boyfriend, he always like my parents always. And he actually had to get used to them. My parents actually phone day not a day that we don't go like without speaking and now he's so used to it when my mom is in doesn't phone you will ask like your mom is not phoning you are they like angry or something <laughs> so you always say that um and also my boyfriend is also a runner his name is Ari Falan so he's also a runner so I, mm. we understand each other when it comes yeah. to we don't okay we don't really have a social life but there is times when we do hang out with friends there's, you know they say there's a time for everything yeah and yeah we always when we travel when he runs in cape town i always go down and then i'm also by my family but um sometimes my family comes up the side and they will also like just come visit and so yeah. but we 
like I said, we speak every day. It doesn't go a day that we don't speak. Um, yeah. And we don't video call. And also, <laughs> also like when we're at home, or when, when, for instance, if I have a big race the other side, they'll always make sure that they come watch. Also. Mm. Mm. Uh, that, yeah, so, that's so cool, man. And, 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 I, and I respect that balance, you know, between everything. Um, and and yeah. talk, to about, talk to us about all things curly. Um, what's <laughs> all about? <laughs> what's that all about? Yeah. So I mean, this. So, like, yeah. yeah, I always say like um, um, beside athletics. Also, here, yeah, let's say um, in between my free time, mm-hmm. I it's all about natural hair and yeah, and the natural hair community. So. Um, I like speaking about natural hair products and curly hair and those type of things. And I also like attending um, curly hair events beside athletics. I think that is my other passion. Um, and it also grew in this time of athletics. Um, also something besides athletics that I can focus on and that I enjoy. Um, so yeah, it's all about curly hair, all about um, how to go, um, how to go on the curly hair um, journey. And, yeah. If you want, you know, sometimes we see hair and we want our hair like that. Yeah. But it's actually a journey. So I keep always remind people that it's a journey and um, and share tips mm-hmm. and tricks of how you can get to that um, stage or how you can start your journey. And yeah. yeah no, I, I, I've started. You didn't embracing. even that question. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've started embracing my, my uh, flat top as well. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, no. My hair curls in the wrong direction, so now I comb it out. But uh, yeah, that's the thing. We also have different hair texture and different hair yeah. types, so we can't yeah. expect. Um, yeah, you can't expect to have my type of hair when you have a different hair texture. Yeah. So it's all mm. about understanding that and accepting your hair for what it is now. Mm. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, thanks for making me feel like you know my hair is a bit acceptable. Um, <laughs> I, 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 it becomes quite a, an, an interesting topic because I chatted to I don't know if you, if, you, if you saw that interview with Ashley Peterson and you know she's also into um, you know the curly the curly and and, 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 and activist for natural hair and and it's yeah. a, it's, an, it's an, an increasingly you know growing movement amongst amongst people that that you know that are activists for for natural hair because. I mean, if you if you type into Google now, and I chatted to you about that, if you type into Google now, professional and unprofessional hair, and you see the differences between what the searches yield, it's a very disturbing yeah. picture. And I'm I'm so yeah. that people are only yeah, 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 I understand. But I also I always tell people like, it's up to you actually. If you want to straighten your hair today, it's really up to you. Mm. You don't have to be like you don't have to have curly hair to actually be a natural um, mm, like mm. curly a natural curly girl friendly you can actually just make basically just use natural hair products mm. you can if you want to wear a wig today it's really up to you if yeah. i feel like no i want to wear my hair curly today it's up yeah. to me and not only about what it's up to me but accepting that if yeah. i want to do this to my hair it's me and yes. not actually what other people think do you understand? No. Yeah. No, definitely. Thanks okay. for sharing that with us. Um, and then uh, last few last few questions, then we can um, conclude. Uh, so you are a Nike sponsored athlete. Um, you know, it's a it's a very prominent brand, and 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 I mean, our ladies on the Cape Flats love Nikes. They, you know, <laughs> talk to us about sponsorship. You know, what does it entail? How did you land the sponsorship? Um, give us some free stuff, maybe if you have. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about the sponsorship. Yeah, so actually, um, I think it was in 2015, if I'm correct, I'm not sure, but I was uh, I'm 15 years old at that age. Um, it was after my race at in Polditch, Victoria. It was, yeah. I was in grade 10 that time at the sports school. And, you know, in the crowd, I always say you never know who's sitting in the crowd. Um, That is actually um, where they saw me. And also Geraldine Poulet, Mm. she actually, she was also sponsored at Nike that time. And she she recommended me to them. Mm. And yeah, since the age of 15, I got a Nike sponsor where they provided me with kit 
um, training clothing, packs, um, you know, our lifestyle, khakis, <laughs> you know, sure. on the Cape Flats, yeah. everyone likes the, the Air Forces and yeah. Air Max. <laughs> So, but for me, uh, yeah, I'm really not a, like a sneaker type of person. Okay. But I, I'm more uh, like trainers and those type of things. But mm -hmm. I know what it means for someone to just be a Nike jacket. Yeah. So I know that even Robbie Forpe of Nike is in, in just like, and they'll go sell it. People would buy it. <laughs> so um, I don't, but for me, it's really not about showing off that I'm a Nike. Yeah. One's an athlete. For me, it's just about using the, the equipment that they give me. And it's also for me to use it and so that people can go buy it out there. But yeah, I got it when I was 15 years old. And up till today, I'm still sponsored by them, where they provide me with kits and so forth. But yeah, I'll wear a pair of trainers until I feel like, no, my trainers are done now. I don't really <laughs> wear every day of a new pair of trainers, yeah. things like that. But it's really just. Um, you know, for me also as an athlete, I save a lot when it comes to buying spikes or, mm. you know, those type of things it where I don't really go to maybe a sports shop and buy um, clothing every day. So yeah. it's just about, yeah, so, just to appreciate what I get actually. Yeah. But, but how does it, yeah. do, you, do you walk into a Nike store and be like, hey guys, I'm Tamsin, I'm the girl that runs for you guys, please give me shoes. Or does it like... No, so basically uh, we have a mentor actually that we actually just message and we say okay is it possible if i can put in an order and maybe there's a budget or so where yeah. i can say okay is it possible if i can maybe place an order for trainers and those type of things for spikes and then they maybe send me like um, a certain amount of training clothing also working on a budget then i'll maybe get spikes maybe trainers and then they also provide us with our international kit like i run in europe and so so then they provide us with the international kit, you know, that all mm -hmm. the Nike athletes wear. And then also then like during the year, we get like um, vouchers where we go into maybe a factory. I know in Cape Town, it's in Joburg, it's Woodmead, but by Cape Town, it's Axis Park. And, Axis Park, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll maybe go there and they will go maybe buy, they'll give us a certain amount of um, yeah, budget, always, always on a budget, so then we'll go into the school and we'll maybe take a few lifestyle um, clothing oh, that we splash. have. <laughs> yeah, not <a> splash. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you can take some things that you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. And, 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 and I mean, that's, 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 that's actually why I'm asking because it seems like, you know, is it, is it something that they limit you on or is it something that you can actually go and walk and you start choosing, you know, exactly what you want? Um, I think it's really they actually limit you on things because now you start choosing and you just yeah. go crazy. <laughs> and they check, does they check your size because they can't make it straight for the uncle and for the auntie, you know, next door. <laughs> no, I always take my family if I go into the store. They don't really fussy about that. But Is it? Uh, it's not like I, I don't, I don't like giving things to people because they always expect you to actually give them the next time or mm. so. So I always mm. take from my family. I always make yeah. sure that I give to my family. Or if someone is really in need, then I'll maybe give. Oh, I love but that. But like, yeah, we always grew up in a household where you actually have to work for what you want. Yeah, yeah. So. Good. No, no, no. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for, for, for sharing that. Um, yeah, now I know how sponsorships work because when I look at these guys, I'm just like, oh, look okay, cool. Just, you know, does this, does Nike's part? And also, yeah. You, yeah, you say, yeah. When you when you when you when you to sponsor, you actually have to maintain a certain performance to actually maintain that sponsorship. Yeah. So if I wasn't working hard or not going to training or those type of things, I wasn't gonna still have the sponsor that I have up until today. Yeah. Um, sure. From fifteen, from the age of fifteen till now, I wouldn't have maintained that relationship if I wasn't working hard or if I wasn't um, mm. performing actually on the track. So. Yeah. It comes in and then you have to work out from your side and they will provide you with the necessary kit or yeah. to make your performances easy or those type of things. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. That's incredible. And then um, lastly, uh, Tamsin, thank you. Thank you for, for all of your time. You know, like uh, if there's someone listening, you know, that, that, that listening to this now, the, 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 
you know, the girl or the guy that's sitting, you know, at home, that's, that's training, you know, that's, that wants to be an athlete, a professional athlete like you are. What advice do you have for them? You know, whether it's in terms of training, whether it's in terms of just life choices, um, what advice do you have for them? I would actually say like, even if it seems like you're getting nowhere, even if it feels like you've been training hard and you, you weren't making teams, um, continue working hard. One day your breakthrough will come. Yeah. Um, sometimes it comes easier for others and sometimes not. We have to work 10 times harder than others. Um, but just continue working hard. Even if it's not, you become in one day an athlete. But I always say athletics or sports shapes you for the person you want to be there one day. I know my daddy always say, I used to be a rugby player, then I'm always saying, now where's your track through anything? Like, there's no proof, but still, even if you don't, don't become one day what you want to be. There's always something that is out there that is for you, yeah. that is designed for you. But I would always say, never forget where you come from, be mm. humble. Um, work hard and also never forget the people that help you um, that help you reach to the things where you are now like never forget that I always speak about my family and I always speak mm. about people that help me um, but I always say that nothing comes easy you have to work and if you one day on the top where you want to be on the podium where you want to be mm. try to motivate and, and, and also inspire others um, and also to be an athlete, it takes hard work. Um, like we all know, wait, funny cake, but he just didn't lay there and yeah. decide, okay, I'm going to run. He worked hard every day yeah. to actually be a world champ or to be a yeah. world record holder. Um, yeah. And for also like, you don't have to be an athlete. You can pursue in any dream yeah. you set for yourself. Yeah. I mean, I watch guys like wait for, I, like I, I followed him, I follow him on Instagram and, I watch that guy like training, how he shares his regimes and stuff and, you know, and, and yeah. really, a really hardworking athlete. And I understand why he's yeah. the champion, why he's the world record holder, because yeah. every single time he's working out and he's taking yeah. care of himself. Um, and that's yeah. cool. And I would also say like, also use your social media platforms to actually, um, not, yeah, just to post about yourself because you never know who's watching what opportunity yeah. it might bring. Yeah, I think that's very yeah. important. That Thank you for, saying, for sharing that, actually, because <laughs> we, we miss how important it is to actually yeah. put, you know, positive stuff on, on Facebook, on Instagram, on our social media, yeah. you know, getting a, a LinkedIn account. We, we miss how important those things are. And we, we post, you know, I know it's cool to post memes and, you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. I think Share other things. Yeah, yeah, but we need to take care of what we actually put on those pages, you know, because you, as you say, you never know in the crowd. You never know who's watching. Um, and you know, yeah. opportunities are waiting for you around the corner. I mean, I, it's, it's so sad when you hear about people that are denied opportunities because of a simple retweet or a simple oh. you know, share or something or post. Yeah, especially years. with this one, the one that happened recently of the girl that applied for my South Africa. South Africa, yeah. <laughs> People went back to 10, five years ago and they brought out things she posted exactly. back then and destroyed yeah. her career. Yeah, like, you're, it's, it's, it's really something we need to pay attention to. And, you know, apart from just giving the career advice and be like, yeah, you need to study, you need to sit with your books, you need to train hard, you need to take care of PR as well because people are going to... Yeah, it's actually building a brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That is what it is. Tamsin, thank you very much. Is there any anything else that you want to share with us? Anything up and coming that we need to take note of or look out, watch out for? No, I just want to say, um, firstly, thank you for having me. Yeah? And thank you for actually doing an interview with anyone. Not anyone, but like role models for people out there. It's a platform mm -hmm. where you're not just focus on big celebs, but any, any, any upcoming um, youth yeah. or the youth that is that is really doing good in our community. Um, we don't really get this platform. And I think for a younger me to actually, um, if you approach them and say, can I do an interview? Like they will actually feel like, wow, I'm actually famous or um, <laughs> I can actually share this yeah. with my friends. You know, mm -hmm. be, it's something that they can be proud of. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you for having me. And also um, no problem. in terms of upcoming races, I think it's, we've been on lockdown, so I think it's really important now to get back on the track. And also mm. we have to keep in mind that 
we all face in a pandemic and it's not just easy to go back in training groups so mm. i think when it comes to that also for me now it's just to focus on i'm going back to off season and focusing on next year's upcoming races yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. And you know, it's, it's, uh, I mean, thanks for pointing out also that uh, about the platform and you know, this 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 is it's intended to be you know by the people for the people. That's uh, and it's yeah. cliche, but um, I, I I most certainly do not want to have people that you know that we cannot. I want people that we can relate to, you know, and people that share our our, um, our experiences, you know, and still achieve against all odds. And I think you're a perfect example of that. And you are such an inspiration. You've inspired me this morning or this afternoon um, in this chat. And I really appreciate your sentiments that you shared, you know, and, and yeah, I look forward to watching you at the Olympics as well and, and bringing out <laughs> the gold for us. And uh, I know yeah. it's possible and, you know, you, you're working hard and it sounds to me, it, like, it sounds like, you know, you, you know exactly what you want and you're going to go for it and get it. Um, and we, you know, we will continue to, to root for you. Um, yeah. And thank you so much for your time in speaking to us because I mean, and you are slightly famous, I must say. I must say you are kind of a public figure, <laughs> um, but but it's also as you say, um, you know, it's about it's it's it's, it's anyone, you know, it's anyone, um, you yeah. know, comes from our communities. Whether you're up and coming, whether you've you've achieved success, or you just want to share your story, you know, how you've achieved something to yeah. so odds to inspire the next person. It's all about aspiring to aspire to inspire before we expire, um, you know. And, yeah. That, that's that's no. what it's about. Yeah, no, I'm really glad that I can use my story to um, inspire someone. Um, yeah, but I think most important is just about goals and, um, yeah. you know, just using your talent to actually just yeah. achieve yeah. those goals. And actually, um, not to achieve those goals, but to bring opportunities like travel yeah. the world, yeah. for instance. I yeah, think it's no, also when you travel in the world, you're building connection with other people. So yeah. it's really a broad aspect when it comes to your talent and your story yeah. and those type of things. Yeah, and you never realize how big the world actually is out there. You know, no, True. <laughs> I mean, I... They it's say a, it's a small world, but no, there's lots huge. to explore. It's huge, you know. Um, yeah. Of course, we are connected by flights and those type of things, but like, to be like over 10,000 kilometers, you know, 15,000 kilometers away from home. It's, you know, it's, it's crazy. Um, and you have yeah. a few hours to get there maybe, but it's crazy to yeah. be away from home and to meet a diff totally different kind of people. Um, and it's, yeah, it's amazing opportunities that await for you, but that's if you make use of the opportunities, you know, as we spoke. True, true. Um, yeah. So yeah, Tamsin, thank you so much. Uh, it, it looks like you want you still want to share something. <laughs> No, no, I think I'm fine. <laughs> that's great, that's great. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Um, and if you've been inspired by what Tamsin has said, you know, what we've been chatting about, leave a comment, you know, share. You never know who might need this message. And, you know, at Aspiration Inspiration, it's all about inspiring to, to, it's all about aspiring to inspire before we expire. So thank you so much for joining us today.